Hi folks, let's machine annealed and hardened tool steel. Let's measure some Rockwell. Let's look at the tooling we use and the speeds and feeds. This is awesome. This blew my mind that we can do this in the shop. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. The idea for this video was a customer that said, hey, can we machine A2 on the Tormach? And I knew we could. It was a one inch piece of round bar. And that's what led to last week's Wednesday widget. We're taking the time to machine a set of soft jaws. This, uh, this A2 is not particularly difficult to machine when it's a meal, but nevertheless, you want to do it in a secure and rigid work holding. Those soft jaws allow us to run a little production run, flip the part over, and get better work holding and better repeatability than using a 5C. So here we just turned down a quick piece of blank. It's a piece of A2 tool steel. We bought it from McMaster. The A means it is air hardening. Nice thing about that is if you have a little heat treat oven, you don't have to quench it. You can let it air harden. Actually tends to be more stable as well. Uh, shout out to Robin Renzetti for some information on that. You've heard me talk about why I love McMaster. They, make, they do such a great job of selling you on certainty. I buy the steel, I know it's going to be good. They include a link to a guideline for heat treating the tool steel. Uh, also, what I wanna show you is the hardness. So I don't often hear people use the B Rockwell scale, which is what they have here, Rockwell B95. Expand the about steel, scroll down, and here's this you know general conversion chart. So 95 is gonna be somewhere in here, which would put it here. It looks like that's a linear scale. So 95 would be something like 18 Rockwell C. That's not hard at all. Uh, when we, when you hear somebody say a file or a one, two, three block or a tool is 60 Rockwell, they're talking about that C scale. To machine the softer A2, we're going to use the variable four flute for tool steel, standard length corner radius, quarter inch, like we said last week, I prefer the set screw TTS holders. Replace that set screw itself with the McMaster part number. Make sure to choke up on your tools. Great recipe then. Measure our tool. Throw that height into PathPilot. Gotta use the touch screen. I, we have one that doesn't have a touch screen and it drives me nuts. One of the best add-ons ever for, uh, for our machine tools. The old knock test, you can feel and see it's secure. I like that. What's our recipe? Well, so what we're trying to do here is machine a part that not only has this slot, but it's got this tapered wall to it. Rather than rotate the part uh, to orient the tool side to cut that angle, we're gonna first adaptive it out. Then we're gonna do a contour to clean up that side wall. And when we're done, we'll come back and do a contour to clean up this inside wall and we raised a burr, so we later added this contour just to knock that edge down slightly. Speeds and feeds, 200 service feet per minute, two and a half thousandths per tooth. Passes, this is really important because I want you guys to notice the difference between this tool and the tool we're about to use on the really hard one, two, three block and end mill. Uh, here we're taking a 50 thousandths width of cut and we're leaving 7th thou radial stock. Let's plug that recipe into this chip thinning calculator. Radial step burber was 0 0.05. Again, that's also known as optimal load in the adaptive. And we're programmed at 0 0.0025 inches per tooth, as you see there. So our effective or actual chip engagement is two thousandths per tooth. That's great. I find this works really well uh, on the Tormach. I actually struggled with some steel in the Tormach earlier on. And I think part of the problem was I was using too large a diameter of tool or I didn't have the right chip load to maximize that removal, but not induce chatter. As you can see here, machine sounds great. We're getting a nice chip. It has thickness to it. That's important, especially in steel versus aluminum, because it's the thickness of that chip that carries some of the heat out. Heat is what can kill tools. It can also cause your parts to move on you, so you'll lose tolerance. But really, it's, it's, it's blowing, uh, ruining your part because of the heat. So here we're starting that 3D contour. If you wanted to do this a little bit better, a little bit less scalloping, you could use a bull nose end mill. Uh, but we found that doing this with a step down in the 2D contour 
of six thousandths of an inch gave a phenomenal finish. You could still drag your fingernail across it and feel the facets, so I don't want to misrepresent that it was mirror or anything, but worked great, and even with that fine step down, only three minute cycle time. And coming back up just to knock that burr off the top. Pretty nice, right? I grabbed a Renishaw tip just because I wanted to show in person, this looks great. You're, again, you're seeing kind of the tooling swirl marks here, which unfortunately I, I, seems to make it look a little worse. Anyways, I was really happy with that result. The tool that we're going to use, I was super excited to give this a try. Lakeshore Carbide, hard mill, end mill, corner radius, quarter inch. Not that expensive for what it's able to do. The idea with hard milling is you can avoid grinding or jig grinding in this, what they say here. So you are able to machine stuff that's already been hardened so that you don't have to heat treat it and then come back and grind it to final size. That's really awesome to be able to hard mill stuff. What's interesting about this tool is they have really small gullets. That's the area between the flute leading edge and the thick, the core of the tool. What's great about that is that the thicker the core, the more carbide you've got in this area, which means the stiffer the tool is. Apparently the other big difference with these hard mills is this NACO coating. That's on my list for this fall to learn more about what coatings and why. This mentions a higher tool life over ALTIN, which is aluminum titanium nitride. Here's what's funny. Even after we did this, I was talking to John Grimsmo. He hard mills 60, 55 Rockwell all the time with the regular uh, Lakeshore. So perhaps this hard mill isn't even necessary, but you're about to see we still got some great results with it. I was more nervous than I've been in a long time when I hit cycle start. It just doesn't make sense to me. It does in the sense that carbide is harder. So if something is harder and it has the right edge and the right recipe, you can cut it. But this is hard. This material is hard. I cannot believe this is working. Speeds and feeds are really important. Technical resources, speeds and feeds, hard mill, speeds and feeds. So we're running a quarter inch tool in about 55 Rockwell tool steel. So they recommend a very wide surface footage range, 250 up to 800. The inch a chip load per tooth, two thou to two and a half thou. That's about 0 0.05 millimeters for our metric friends. But here's the big difference. The depth of cut, we're doing a profiling cut. So you can go up to 1.5 times diameter, but only 0 0.045 width of cut. 0 0.25 times 0 0.045. That means a max of 11 thou, is that right? Yeah, that is right, 0 0.0. 1125. But when I was reading this, I thought, you know, I bet you this block could be closer to 60 Rockwell. We'll test it here in a minute. That reduces your depth to one times and your width of cut to 0.025. So 0.25 for a quarter inch tool times 0 0.025 means only six thousandths of an inch. That's only 0.15 millimeters. Pretty crazy. So 2D adaptive strategy, look at that tool path. You're seeing so much yellow because it's doing these linking moves as it takes small widths of cut. I backed down the surface footage, taking it easy, 150. Yes, the recommended was a little bit higher. For the 55 to 60, it was 200 to 500. If you go even harder than 60 though, it's 150 to 300. So how I interpret that, is I'm not going to ruin the tool by doing it on the slightly low end. In other words, even if this was 55 Rockwell and it's saying we should be at 250 minimum, I'm pretty sure we're not going to damage the tool or have a problem running it on the lower end uh, at that 150. Two thousandths of an inch chip per tooth and width of cut, optimal load, only that 0.025 times diameter or about six thousandths of an inch. Make sure your linking moves here on your adaptive has a no engagement feed rate that is at your machine's maximum movement. I also should have added a lift height, say a 0 0.005. What that does is when the linking move or when the tool moves across the part in, in theory in air, it's not cutting, it lifts it up five thousandths of an inch. That way it's not dragging or rubbing along your part. 
You wanna do this dry, we're using, uh, meaning not flood, we're using air with just a tiny bit of mist, which I believe is also okay. Uh, the air really was to help the camera view and not to recut chips. If you think about it, given the, the relatively small chip load per tooth and the width of cut, you don't wanna recut chips. It's going to really uh, increase your chip load. I thought the adaptive toolpath was really kind of gnarly. I'm not used to seeing that kind of a toolpath on a relatively simple shape. But sure enough, it maintained, uh, it maintained a, a good constant engagement. And that's what I have really loved about using the HSM Works and Fusion 360 cam. It has never let me down when it comes to that recipe. And that is really huge. And the finishes, I wish I could, ex could explain this folks. They were silky smooth. They don't look perfect. Um, that's another topic I've been fascinated with. Sometimes uh, in better RAs, RA stands for like roughness average, don't always look like mirrors, which is a bit odd, but awesome. So how hard was that one, two, three block? My first thought was people are gonna say, oh, it was a soft block or it was just you know case hardened on the outside. So I've got this PTC portable hardness tester. Make our dimple, make sure we use this on a stable surface. That way we get a correct size dimple with the center punch. Then we grab their tool and we measure the lines to see how big that crater was. And that gives us a pretty decent approximation for how hard the material is. Certainly it's great, it's a smaller unit uh, and it's quite inexpensive compared to the thousands of dollars for a larger benchtop style uh, Rockwell tester. So you can see here, this was no small feat to get the camera looking through it. We're right at about 55 Rockwell. So I thought, let's find something that's harder and let's find something that just to me is crazy to think about machining. Let's machine an end mill. This to me was, was just continuing the craziness. I cannot believe this would work. I literally still, even after machining the one, two, three block, I thought the end mill was just gonna say no thanks uh, to, the, to the carbide high feed end mill. I cannot believe it. I, I was so excited to try this. I just grabbed an old high speed steel. It was a five eighths inch end mill. Created a, a quick CAD divot in the back side of that tool. We measured the Rockwell hardness just to confirm it was right around 60. Same 2D adaptive recipe, same surface footage, chip load, and width of cut, leaving 5,000 radial sock to leave to come back for a contour to clean it up. Folks, look at this. This is insane. The other question I had is, would this work, but the Tormach might have problems, and it didn't, which is awesome. Even with this small width of cut and two thousandths of an inch per tooth chip load, we're still making a real chip. And one of the things I've learned recently is just how important it is as a machinist to start to learn how to read that chip. Is the chip forming right? Uh, is there heat in it? Really a good thing to do. More coming on that. And finally, the 2D contour cleanup. Just awesome. Looked great. Instead of finishing the video, I had one last thought, which is, okay, is this something that the Tormach 1100 is able to do, but not the 440? The 440 is a smaller machine, a little bit less horsepower, is it less rigid? So I thought, let's just do it. Exact same tool, exact same one, two, three block. We just flipped it over, same speeds and feeds, and it had no problem whatsoever. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. I was super happy. So if you folks have listened to the Business of Machining podcast that John Grimsman and I do, John has talked about how he's doing more and more hard milling. So they're having their knives heat treated to 60 Rockwell. I think they actually heat treat them in-house. And in that hardened state, they're able to do hard milling. And it's funny because it avoids the problem of a part moving on you and heat treat and then having to machine or grind back to size. And the irony is that when a steel is really hard, when you machine it with the right recipe, it actually machines beautifully, so you get a really good surface finish. So it's kind of one of those win-win all around. And again, the craziness is that John's using regular uh, steel end mills. He's not using these 
uh, thicker core, thinner flute, uh, specially coated high feed, or excuse me, high, hard milling end mills. So maybe some more experimenting to come folks, but think about this if it's useful in your job uh, or what you're trying to do in your shop. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Take care. See you next Wednesday.